Something very dramatic that I've noticed is how men struggle with their failures, especially husbands and fathers. They are very much dragged down and held back by the mistakes that they've made. I think it's important that we reckon with this and that we recognize there is actually in their being too hard on themselves and our being too hard on ourselves, there's actually an important insight in there. There is a great demand by our responsibilities as husbands, as father, as a man. There's a great demand that we live a certain kind of life, that we have a certain kind of character. And the reality is failures here and the ones that particularly trouble men for good reason is moral failures, not just kind of the mistake, oh, I wasn't clever enough to figure something out, but more a moral weakness, a bad choice, a weak choice has undermines something very important. And, and the insight here is life is high stakes. Our moral failures do have consequences. And so the answer here obviously is not to say, well, don't worry about it. We need to, as it were, man up and recognize, yeah, the fact that we have made some of the mistakes, some of the failures, does have real consequences. And we do need to work on changing it. I want to give you one concrete tool for overcoming past mistakes better. Take the sentence, I failed them. Picture this, I failed them. Now I want you to focus, there's two parts. There's I failed and there's them. I think we spend a lot of our time self-flagellating, getting upset with ourselves, feeling down about how I failed. That's where we keep our focus. I failed. Now, the reality is, I did fail. And I'm not saying that we're going to somehow pretend that we didn't. I'm all for extreme ownership. I'm all for recognizing, hey, I'm responsible. But what's the best way to take responsibility and then act out that responsibility well? Is to be able to focus on the other. So please focus on the other word, them. They are the ones that I have failed. And that's why my failure has the particular significance that it does. This is why I'm feeling the pain, because they are not being served as I am called to serve them. And again, here I as a man have a, a, a deep insight, a great sense that what I do affects them, and it is my responsibility to reckon with that and to realize if I'm not being the man I need to be, they are going to suffer for that. So I need to recognize that. So I have failed them. But what's the best way to be prepared to move forward? It's not to keep thinking about I failed. It's to think about them and to think about their needs now. I failed is in the past tense. Them could be either. Let's focus on on it in the present. What are their needs now? Because really, the only needs they have are present needs. There's not really any such thing now as past needs. Sure, there were needs then that I didn't take care of. But the only significance that that has now is where they are now. Does that make them have certain further needs now? Well, if it does, their current needs, their present needs, and that's where my focus is, live in the present. So I'm going to focus on them, which is going to allow me then to focus further on what do I need to do for them today? How can I be the better man that I need to be? Why is that my big suggestion? Because in my experience, the greatest negative aspect of our focus as men on how we failed is that it keeps us from doing what we need to do for them now. 
rather than inspiring us to be better, it holds us back. And so that's why I'm saying focus on the them, that which is going to inspire us to be better. Only think about the I failed to the extent that we need to, to learn what we need to learn. Otherwise, it's about the present. Experience makes obvious that overcoming failures is actually one of the greatest prods and keys to success. All the more reason for us to think more about how do we learn from our past mistakes. But I want to make a bit of a sidebar that's a little bit offbeat. Here's something that I may have put it this way. It's a kind of gift in having made a mistake or having failed that's not the gift, as important as it is, of how I can learn from it, but it's a different one. It's how now, my having failed in this way, my presence and encouragement can be a profound and irreplaceable gift to others sometime later who make the same mistake I did. There's something utterly irreplaceable when you're mentoring someone, when you're coaching someone, when you're fathering someone, when you're being a friend to someone, where someone fails, someone makes a serious mistake, and you're able to say, you are not alone in this. I have been there. You're going to be fine. I know. It's, it's, it's hard to appreciate this, but think how powerful it is. And many have been blessed to see this, maybe only much later, that I made this mistake. It was a gift to me in as much as I learned from it. And it's also a gift to me and to others because I was able to be there with them accompany them and guide them through and tell them you're going to be just fine.